the great King David. These days, we hear the name of David in the news and in uh, different ways, especially when it comes to the war that's going on in Israel. And uh, David was great. 3,000 years ago, he extended the borders of Israel to their furthest most points. He was the warrior king. He established uh, the center uh, for the Israel, uh, the nation at Jerusalem in a miraculous conquest, we might say, an amazing conquest. And uh, today we'd like to speak a little bit about a different aspect of his life. I'm coming to you from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Krause. We hope that you'll join us for worship soon. We also have satellites up in the town of Aaron, close to Holy Hill, and east of us in the city of Wauwatosa. Check our website out for more details. King David. He was also not just a warrior king. He was a sinner. And we're told uh, at great length about his sin of adultery with Bathsheba, the murder of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, and the psalm that especially speaks about this is Psalm 51. Nathan the prophet had come and uh, made very clear to David uh, that he had sinned and that uh, he had defied the Lord God Almighty. And the response is given to us in this psalm, Psalm 51. I'm going to re uh, read uh, verses 1 to 12 of that psalm. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. David is confronted with his sin, and his sin was great. His sin of adultery, his sin of murder. Uh, but we see the greatness of David in his response to the sins which he had committed. When he is confronted with these sins by prophet uh, Nathan, we have uh, David confessing, I sinned. He doesn't start making all sorts of excuses. He doesn't start to pile up all the reasons why he fell into that sin. He simply says he's a sinner. He says he was sinful already at the time of birth. He was sinful and sinfully conceived inside the womb of his mother, but that's no excuse. He has sinned against the Lord God Almighty. Now, he has sinned against different people. He has sinned against his wife. He has sinned against Bathsheba. He has sinned against Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. He had him murdered. He had sinned against his whole army. How can you trust a leader when they do something as deceitful as this? when they call out uh, retreat, but don't tell everybody so that Uriah would be killed there on the battlefield and that it would look like it was a part of a battle when actually it was murder. How can you trust a leader like that? But when he makes confession here in Psalm 51, he especially looks to the Lord. He says against you, you only have I sinned. He makes very clear that the great sin that he had committed was against individuals, to be sure, uh, but more so he had sinned against God. But he realizes that God is going to forgive him, that God is going to wash him, that God is going to cleanse him, that God is going to wash away those sins and make them white as before. He's going to do these things because he is a merciful God. He is a faithful God. And that is exactly what he has promised. 
And now David gives thanks. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Thank you, Lord, huh, for washing my heart clean again. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a new start. Whatever happens to me, whatever consequences there are, the great consequence especially was that the one that was born between him and Bathsheba would die. And that's exactly what happens. And I hope, too, uh, that as we make confession of our sin, we don't make excuses. We pour out our heart to God. And we realize his forgiveness and also realize that there are consequences for sins that we have to pay for in this life. And we thank God that he has cleansed us. We thank God that he has given to us a clean spirit. We thank God that he has renewed in us the joy of salvation. We pray. Lord God, keep us from sin. But when we do fall into sin, lead us to repent. Not to make excuses for all the different uh, reasons we might think we have fallen into that sin, but to make clear, Lord, I have fallen short. I have done what was wrong. I have sinned against others, but especially I have sinned against you. But wash me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Clean me, Lord. Forgive me my sins and give me a new willing spirit to serve you. In your name, Jesus. Amen.